Okay, assalamualaikum. Can you hear me? Walaikum salam. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who came in the person of Master Farhan Muhammad and that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is the exalted Christ and the honorable minister Farrakhan is our Messiah. Assalamu alaikum. So I'm not sure if you can hear me, um, but I'm going to pray. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. All praises to, to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the Beneficent, the Merciful, Master of the Day of Requital. Thee do we serve and thee do we beseech for help. O Allah, guide us on the right path, the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed favors, not the path of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor of those who go astray. Amen. Um, is there any readers today? If you are ready to read, please type the word reader in the comment section. And then I'm going to share the screen. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. Okay. So is there anyone that would like to read? Recording in Okay. okay, so I'm going to read. Oops. We were at Surak. Mute one of your um your tablets or computers or whatever. I I did. It's just not working out together when I have the tablet and like it's turn one of them like completely down the volume on one of them. Turn it completely down so it doesn't pick it up on the other device. It's working now? Yes, ma'am, that's better. Okay. Let's see if there's any readers. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Oh, oh, you will believe. Fasting is prescribed. Wait, sorry. I didn't share the screen. OK, 
Okay, can you see the screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All you who believe, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you, so that you may guard against evil. For a certain number of days, now whoever from among you is sick or on a journey, he shall fast a like number of other days. And those who find it extremely hard may effect redemption by feeding a poor man. So whoever does good spontaneously, it is better for him. And that you fast is better for you if you know. The month of Ramadan is that in which the Quran was revealed, a guidance to men and clear proofs of the guidance and the criterion. So whoever of you is present in the month, he shall fast therein, and whoever is sick or on a journey, he shall fast a like number of other days. Allah desires ease for you, and he desires not hardship for you, and he desires that you should complete the number and that you should exalt the greatness of Allah for having guided you and that you may give thanks. And when my servants ask thee concerning me, surely I am nigh. I answer the prayer of the suppliant when he calls on me. So when should hear my calling and believe in me, that they may walk in the right way. It is made lawful for you to go in your wives on the night of the fast. They are an apparel for you and you are an apparel for them. Allah knows that you acted unjustly to yourselves. So he turned to you in mercy and removed the burden from you. So now be in contact with them and seek Seek what Allah has ordained for you and eat and drink until the whiteness of the day becomes distinct from the blackness of the night at dawn. Then complete the fast until nightfall and touch them not until you keep to the mosques. These are the limits of Allah. So do not, so go not near them. Thus, thus does Allah make clear his messages for men that they may keep their duty. One second. I know. I know. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I found the way. Can you still see the screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And swallow not up your property among yourselves by false means, nor seek to gain access thereby to the judges so that you may swallow up a part of the property of men wrongfully while you know. They ask thee of the new moons, say, they are times appointed for men and for the pilgrimage. And it is not righteousness that you enter the houses by their backs, but it is righteous who keeps his duty. But he is righteous who keeps his duty. And go into the houses by their doors and keep your duty to Allah that you may be successful. And fight in the way of Allah against those who fight against you but be not aggressive. Surely Allah loves not the transgressors, not the aggressors. And kill them wherever you find them and drive them out where they drove you out. And persecution is worse than slaughter. And find not with them at the sacred mosque and fight not with them at the sacred mosque until they fight with you in it. So if they fight with you in it, slay them. Such is the recompense of the disbelievers. But if they desist, then surely Allah is forgiving, merciful. And fight them until there's no persecution. 
and religion is only for Allah. But if they desist, then there should be no hostility except against the oppressors. The sacred mosque for the sacred month and retaliation is allowed in sacred things. Whoever then acts aggressively against you, inflict injury on him according to the injury he has inflicted on you and keep your duty to Allah and know that Allah in, is with those who keep their duty and spend in the way of Allah and cast not yourselves to perdition with your own hands and do good to others. Surely Allah loves the doers of good and accomplish the pilgrimage, pilgrimage and the visit for Allah. But if you are prevented, send whatever offering is easy to obtain and shave not your head until the offering reaches its destination. Then whoever among you is sick or has an ailment of the head, he may effect a compensation by fasting or alms or sacrificing. And when you are secure, whoever profits by combining the visit with the pilgrimage should take whatever offering is easy to obtain. But he who cannot find an offering should fast for three days during the pilgrimage and for seven days when you return. These are 10 days complete. This is for him who, whose family is not present in the sacred mosque. And keep your duty to Allah and know that Allah is severe in requiting, requiting evil. The months of pilgrimage are well known. So whoever determines to perform pilgrimage therein, there shall be no immodest speech, nor abusing, nor altercation in the pilgrimage. And whatever good you do, Allah knows it. And make provision for yourselves, the best provision being to keep one's duty. And keep your duty to me, all men of understanding. It is no sin for you that you seek the bounty of your Lord. So when you press on from Arafat, remember Allah near the holy monument. And remember him as he has guided you. Though before that, you were certainly of the erring ones. Then hasten on and hasten on from where the people hasten on and ask the forgiveness of Allah. Surely Allah is forgiving, merciful. And when you have performed your devotion, laud Allah as you lauded your fathers, rather a more hearty lauding. But there are some people who say, our Lord, give us in the world. And for such, there is no portion in the hereafter. And there are some among them who say, our Lord, grant us good in this world and good in the hereafter. And save us from the chastisement of the fire. For those, there is a portion on account of what they have heard. Have heard. And Allah is swift at reckoning. And remember Allah during the appointed days. Then whoever has enough in two days, it is no sin for him. And whoever stays behind, it is no sin for him. For one who keeps their du his duty. And keep your duty to Allah and know that you will be gathered together to him. And of man is he whose speech about the life of this world pleases thee. And he calls Allah to witness as to that which is in his heart. Yet he is the most violent of adversaries. And when he holds authority, he makes effort in the land to cause mischief in it and destroy tilth and offspring. And Allah loves not mischief. And when it is said to him, be careful of thy duty to Allah, pride carries him off to sin. So hell is sufficient for him and certainly evil is the resting place. And of man is he who sells, oh, sorry who sells himself to seek the pressure of Allah 
and Allah is compassionate to the servants. Or you will believe, enter into complete peace and follow not the footsteps of the devil. Surely he is your open enemy. But if you slip after clear arguments have come to you, then know that, that Allah is mighty, wise. They wait for naught, but that Allah should come to them in the shadow of the clouds with angels, and the matter has already been decided. And to Allah, all matters returned. Ask of the children of Israel how many a clear sign we gave them. And whoever changes the favor of Allah after it has come to him, then surely Allah is severe in requiting evil. The life of this world is made to seem fair to those who disbelieve, and they mock those who believe, and those who keep their duty will be above them on the day of resurrection. And Allah gives to whom he pleases without measure. Mankind is a single nation. So Allah raised prophets as bearers of good news and as warners, and he revealed with them the book with truth. That is that it might judge between people concerning that in which they differ, and none but the very people who were given it deferred about it after clear arguments had come to them and being one another. So Allah has guided by His will those who believe to the truth about which they deferred. And Allah guides whom he pleases to the right path. Or do you think that you will enter gar the garden while there has not yet befallen you the like of what befell those who have passed before you? Distress and affliction befell them and they were shaken violently so that the messenger and those who believed with him said, when will the help of Allah come? Now surely the help of Allah is nigh. They asked thee as to what they should spend. Say, whatever wealth you spend, it is for the parents and the near of kin and the orphans and the needy and the wayfarer. And whatever good you do, Allah surely is nowhere of it. Fighting is enjoined on you, though it is disliked by you. And it may be that you dislike a thing what it is good for you, and it may be that you love a thing, what it is evil for you, and Allah knows while you know not. They ask thee about fighting in the sacred month. Say, fighting is, it is a grave offense, and hindering men from Allah's way, and denying him and the sacred mosque, and turning its people out of it, are still graver with Allah. And persecution is graver with Allah, and persecution is graver, graver than slaughter. And they will not cease fighting you until they turn you back from your religion, if they can. And whoever of you turns back from his religion, then he dies well, and then he dies well, an unbeliever. These it is whose work, whose works for go for nothing in this world and the year after. And they are the companions of the fire. Therein they will abide. Those who believe and those who fled their homes and strove hard in Allah's way, these surely hope for the mercy of Allah and Allah is forgiving, merciful. They ask thee about intoxicants and games of chance. Games of chance say, in both of them is a great sin and some advantage for men and their sin is greater than their advantage. And they ask thee as to what they should spend, say what you can spare. Thus Allah, thus does Allah make clear to you the message, messages that you may ponder on this world and the year after. And after, and they ask thee concerning the orphans, say, to set right their, affair, their affairs is good. And if you mix with them, they are your brethren. brethren. And Allah knows him who makes mischiefs, 
who makes mischief from him who sets right. And if Allah pleased, he would have made matters difficult for you. Surely Allah is mighty, wise. And marry not the idolatresses until they believe. And certainly a believing maid is better than an idolatress, even though she please you. Nor give believing women in marriage to idolaters until they believe. And certainly a believing slave is better than an idolater, even though he please you. These invite to the fire, and Allah invited to the garden and to forgiveness by his will. And he makes clear his messages to men that they may be mindful. And they ask thee about menstruation, say it is harmful. So keep aloof from women during menstrual discharge and go not near them until they are clean. But when they are, have cleansed themselves, going to them as Allah has commanded you. Surely Allah loves those who turn much to him and loves those who purify themselves. Your wives are a tilth for you. So go in to your tilth when you like and send good beforehand for yourselves and keep your duty to Allah and know that you will meet him and give good news to the believers and make not Allah by your oath, a hindrance to your doing good and keeping your duty and making peace between men. And Allah is hearing, knowing. Allah will not call you to account for what is vain in your oath, but he will call you to account for what your hearts have earned. And Allah is forgiving, forbearing. Those who swear that they will not go into their wives should wait for four months. Then if they go back, Allah is surely forgiving, merciful. And if they resolve on a divorce, Allah is surely hearing, knowing. And the divorced women should keep themselves in waiting for three courses. And it is not lawful for them to conceal that which Allah has created in their wombs. If they believe in Allah and the last day. And their husbands have a better right to them to, to take them back in the meanwhile if they wish for reconciliation. And women have rights similar to those against them in a just manner. And men are a degree above them. And Allah is mighty, wise. Divorce may be pronounced twice. Then keep them in good fellowship to, to let them go with kindness. And it is not lawful for you to take any part of what you have given them, unless both fear that they cannot keep, with the, keep within the limits of Allah. Then if you fear that they cannot keep within the limits of Allah, there is no blame on them for what she gives you, what she gives up to become free thereby. These are the limits of Allah. So exceed them not and whoever exceeds the limits of Allah these are the wrongdoers so if he divorces her the third time she shall not be lawful to him afterwards until she marries another husband if she divorces her there is no blame on them both if they return to each other by marriage if they think that they can keep within the limits of Allah and these are the limits of Allah which he makes clear for people who know. And when he divorced women and they reached their prescribed time, then retained them in kindness or set them free with kindness and retain, retain them not so, injury, so that you exceed the limits. And whoever does this, he, he indeed wrongs his own soul and take not Allah's messages for a mockery. And remember Allah's favor to you and that which he has revealed to you of the book and the wisdom, admonishing you thereby. And keep your duty to Allah, and know that Allah is the knower of all things. And when he divorce women, and they end their term, prevent them not from marrying their husbands if they agree among themselves in a lawful manner. With this is admonished, he among you who believes in Allah and the last day. 
this is more profitable for you and purer. And Allah knows while you know not. And mothers shall suckle their children for two whole years, for him desires to complete the time of suckling. And their maintenance and their clothing must be borne by the father according to usage. No soul shall be burdened beyond its capacity. Neither shall the mother be made to suffer harm on account of her child, nor a father on account of his child. And a similar duty devolves on the father's hair. But if both desire weaning by mutual consent and counsel, there is not blame on them. And if you wish to engage a wet nurse for your children, there is no blame on you, so long as you pay what you promised according to usage. And keep your duty to Allah, and know that Allah is seer of what you do. And as for those of you who die and leave wives behind, such women should keep themselves in waiting for four months and 10 days. When they reach their term, there is no blame on you for what they do for themselves in a lawful manner, and Allah is aware of what you do. And there is no blame on you respecting that which you speak indirectly in the asking of such women in marriage or keep the proposal concealed within your minds. Allah knows that you will have them in your minds, but give them not a promise in secret unless you speak in a lawful manner and confirm not the marriage tie until the prescribed period reaches its end. And know that Allah knows what is in your minds. So beware of him and know that Allah is forgiving, forbearing. There is no blame on you if you divorce women who are yet you have not touched them nor appointed for them a portion and provide for them the wealthy according to means to his means and the strain according to his means a provision according to usage this is a duty on the doers of good and if you divorce them before you have touched them and you have appointed for them a portion, pay half of what you have appointed, unless they forego or he forgoes, in whose hand is the marriage tie. And it is nearer to dutifulness that you forgo, nor neglect the giving of free gifts between you. Surely Allah is seer of what you do. Guard the prayers and the most excellent prayer and stand up truly obedient to Allah. And if you are in danger, say your prayer on foot or on horseback. And when you are secure, remember Allah as he has taught you what you knew not. And those of you who die and leave wives behind should make a bequest in favor of their wives of maintenance for a year without turning them out. Then if they themselves go away, there is no blame on you for what they do of lawful deeds concerning themselves and Allah is mighty wise. And for the divorced women, provision must be made in kindness. This is incumbent on those who have regard for duty. Allah thus makes clear to you his messages that you may understand. Has thou not Consider those who went forth from their homes, and they were thousands for fear of death. Then Allah said to them, Die. Then He gave them life. Surely Allah is gracious to people, but, peop but most people are not grateful. And fight in the way of Allah, and know that Allah is hearing, knowing. Who is it that will offer to Allah a goodly gift? So He multiplies it to him manifold, and Allah receives and amplifies, and to him you shall be returned, you shall be returned. Hast thou not thought of the leaders of the children of Israel after Moses, when they said to a prophet of theirs, raise up for us a king, that we may fight in the way of Allah. He said, may it not be that you will not fight if fighting is ordained for you, they said, and what reason have we that we should not fight in Allah's way? And we have indeed been deprived of our homes and our children. 
but when fighting was ordained for them, they turned back, except a few of them, and Allah is knower of the wrongdoers. And their prophet said to them, surely Allah has raised Saul to be a king over you. They said, how can we have kingdom over us while we have a greater right to kingdom than he? And he has not been granted abundance of wealth. He said, surely Allah has chosen him above you and has increased him abundantly in knowledge and physique. And Allah grants his kingdom to whom he pleases. And Allah is ample giving, knowing. And their prophet said to them, Surely the, signs, the sign of his kingdom is that there shall come to you the heart in which there is tranquility from your Lord and the best of what the followers of Moses and the followers of Aaron have left, the angel bearing it. Surely there is a sign in this for you if you are believers. So when Saul set out with the forces, he said, Surely Allah will try you with a river. Whoever drinks from it, he is not of me. And whoever tasted not, he is surely of me. Except he who, make, he who takes a handful with his hand. But, when, but they drank of it, save a, save a few of them. So when he had crossed it, he and those who believed with him, they said, we have today no power against Goliath and his forces. Those who were sure that they would meet their Lord said, how often has a small part vanquished a numerous host by Allah's permission? And Allah is with the steadfast. And when they went out against Goliath and his forces, they, say, they said, our Lord, pour out patience on us and make us make our steps firm and help us against the disbelieving people. So they put them to fight by Allah's permission. And David slew Goliath. And Allah gave him kingdom and wisdom and taught him of what he pleased. And were it not for Allah's repelling some men by others, the earth would certainly be in a state of disorder. But Allah is full of grace to the worlds. These are the messages of Allah. We recite them to thee with truth. And surely thou art of the messengers. We have made some of these messengers to excel others. Among them are they who, whom are they to whom Allah spoke. And some of them he exalted by many degrees of rank. And we have clear arguments to Jesus, son of Mary, and strengthened him with the Holy Spirit. And if Allah had pleased, those after them would not have fought one with another after clear argument had come to them, but they disagreed. So some of them believed and some of them denied. And if Allah had pleased, they would not have fought one with another, but Allah does what he, what he intends. Excuse oh, me, Sister Ebony. Yes? We have two readers. We have Sister Ebony and we have Sister um, Naila. Oh, perfect. Okay, so Sister Ebony, go ahead. You can start with 254. One second, I'm going to just put myself on mute and then you can go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Um, sis, I, I am not following in my book, so could I just follow from your screen there? Sister Amandine? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, these are the messages of Allah. We recite, we recite them to thee with truth, and surely thou art of the messengers. We have made some of these messengers to excel others. Among them are they who... I'm sorry, are you reading 254? Uh, yeah, I, I, I realized I went like a couple of um, surahs behind, like behind where you like left off. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I can't see anymore. Okay, thank you. 
Um, oh, you who believe, spend out of what we have given you before the day comes in which there is no bargaining, nor friendship, no intercession. And the disbelievers, they are the wrongdoers. Allah, there is no God but he, the ever living, the self subsisting by whom all subsist. Slumber overtakes him not, nor sleep. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. Who is he that can intercede with him but by his permission? He knows what is before them and what is behind them, and they encompass nothing of his knowing except what he pleases. His knowing extends over the heavens and the earth, and the, and the preservation of them both tires him not. And he is the most high, the great. There is no compulsion in religion. The right way is indeed clearly distinct from error. Uh, so whoever so whoever disbelieves in the whoever so whoever disbelieves in the devil and believes in Allah, he indeed lays hold onto the firmest handle, which shall never break. And Allah is hearing, knowing. Allah is the friend of those who believe; He brings them out of darkness into light. And those who disbelieve, their friends are the devils who take them out of light into darkness. They are the companions of the fire, therein they abide. Hast thou not thought of him who disputed with Abraham about, the, about his Lord, because Allah had given him kingdom? When Abraham said, my Lord is he who gives life and causes to die, he said, I give life and cause death. Abraham said, surely Allah causes the sun to rise from the east, so do thou make it rise from the west. Thus, he who disbelieved was, con was confounded, and Allah guides not the unjust people. Or like him who passes, so sorry, or like him who passed by a town and it had fallen in upon its roofs, he said, When will Allah give it life after its death? So Allah caused him to die for a hundred years, then raised him. He said, How long hast thou tarried? He said, I have tarried a day or part of a day. He said, nay, thou hast tarried a hundred years, but look at thy food and drink. Years have not passed over it and look at thy ass and they, and sorry, and that we may make be assigned to men and look at the bones, how we see them together, then clothe them with flesh. So when it became clear to him, he said, I know that Allah is possessor of power over all things. And when Abraham said, My Lord, show me how that so show me how thou givest life to the dead, he said, Dost thou not believe? He said, Yes, but that my heart may be at ease, he said. Then take four birds, then tame them to incline to thee, then place on every mountain a part of them, then class them, they will come to thee flying and know that Allah is mighty, wise. The parable of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is as the parable of a grain growing seven ears, in every ear a hundred grains, and Allah multiplies further for whom he pleases, and Allah is ample giving, knowing. Those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah then follow up, then follow not up, what they have spent with reproach or injury, their reward is with their Lord, and they shall have no fear, nor shall they grieve. A kind word with forgiveness is better than charity followed by injury, and Allah is self-sufficient and forbearing. O you who believe, make not your charity worthless by reproach and injury. Like him who spends his wealth, like him who spends his wealth to be seen of men and believes not in Allah and the last day. So his parable is as the parable of a smooth rock with earth upon it. Then heaven, then heavy rain falls upon it. So it leaves it bare. They are not able to gain anything of that which they earn. And Allah guides not the disbelieving people. And the parable of those who spend their wealth to seek Allah's pleasure and for the strengthening of their souls is as the parable of a garden on elevated ground, upon which heavy rain falls. So it brings forth its fruit twofold. But if heavy rain falls not on it, light rain suffices, and Allah is seer of what you do. 
does one of you like to have a garden of palms and vines with streams flowing in? With streams flowing in it, he has therein all kinds of fruits and old age has overtaken him and he has weak offspring when lo, a whirlwind with fire in it smite it so it becomes blasted. Thus, Allah makes the messages clear to you that you may reflect. O you who believe, spend of, spend of the good things that you earn and of that which we bring forth for you out of the earth and aim not at the, aim not at the bad spend thereof while you would not take it yourself unless you, unless you connive at it. And know that Allah is self-sufficient and praiseworthy. The devil threatens you with poverty and enjoins you to the niggardly, to be niggardly. And Allah promises you forgiveness from himself and abundance. And Allah is ample giving, knowing. He grants wisdom to who he pleases. And whoever is granted wisdom, he indeed is given a great good. And none mind but men of understanding. And whatever alms you give or whatever vow you vow, Allah surely knows it. And the wrongdoer shall have no helpers. If you manifest charity, how excellent is it? How excellent it is. And if you hide it and give it to the poor, it is good for you. And it will do away with some of your evil deeds. And Allah is aware of what you do. Their guidance is not thy duty, but Allah guides whom he pleases. And whoever and whatever good thing you spend, it is to your good. And you spend not, but to seek Allah's pleasure. And whatever good thing you spend, it will be paid back to you in full, and you will not be wronged. Charity is for the poor who are confined in, in the way of Allah. They cannot go about in the land. The ignorant man thinks them to be rich on account of their abstaining from begging. Thou canst recognize them by their maker. They beg not of men importunate, importunately. And whatever good thing you spend, surely Allah is nor of it. Those who spend their wealth by night and day, privately and publicly, their reward is with their Lord. And they have no fear, nor shall they grieve. Those who swallow usury, those who swallow usury cannot arise, except as he arises whom the devil prostrates by his touch. That is, be that is because they say trading is only like usury. And Allah has allowed trading and forbidden usury. And whomever and whomsoever, then the admonition has come from his Lord, and he desists, he shall have what has already passed. And his affair is in the hands of Allah, and whomever returns to it. These are the companions of the fire therein, they will abide. Allah will blot out usury, and he causes charity to prosper. And Allah loves not any ungrateful sinner. Those who believe and do good deeds and keep up prayer and pay the poor rate, their reward is with their Lord, and they have no fear, nor, sh nor shall they grieve. O you who believe, keep your duty to Allah and relinquish, relinquish what remains due from usury if you are believers. If you do it not, then be, a, be apprised of war from Allah and his messenger. And if you repent, then you shall have your capital. Wrong not, and you shall not be wronged. And if the debtor is in, is in straightness, let there be postponement till he is in ease, and that you remit it, as alms is better for you, if you only knew. And guard yourself against a day in which you will be returned to Allah. Then every soul will be paid in full what it has earned, and they will not be wronged. O oh, you, oh, you who believe, when you contract a debt for a fixed time, write it down and let a scribe write it down between you with fairness. Nor should the scribe refuse to write as Allah has taught him. So let him write. And let him who owes the debt dictate and he should observe his duty to Allah, his Lord, and not diminish anything from it. But if he who owes the debt is is unsound in understanding or weak, or if he is not able to dictate himself, let his guardian dictate with fairness. 
and call to witness from among your men two witnesses. But if there are not two men, then one man and two women from among those whom you choose to be witnesses, so that if one of the two er errs, the one, sorry, if one of the two errs, then one may remind the other, and the witness must not refuse when they are summoned. And be not averse to writing it, whether it is small or large, along with the time of its falling due. This is more equitable in the sight of Allah and makes testimony sure and the best way to keep away from doubts. But when it is ready, merchandise which when it is ready merchandise which you give and take among yourselves from hand to hand, there is no blame on you in not writing it down. And have witnesses when you sell one to another, and let no harm be done to the scribe or to the witnesses. And if you do, and if you do it, then surely it is a transgression on your part. And keep your duty to Allah, and Allah teaches you, and Allah is knower of all things. And if you are on a journey and you cannot find a scribe, a security may be taken into possession. But if one of you trusts another, then he who is trusted should deliver his trust and let him keep his duty to Allah his Lord and conceal not testimony. And whoever conceals it, his heart is surely sinful. And Allah is knower of what you do. To Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. And whether you manifest what is in your mind or hide it, Allah will call you to account according to it. So he forgives whom he pleases and chastises whom he pleases. And Allah is possessor of power over all things. The messenger believes in what has been revealed to him from his Lord. And so do the believers. They all believe in Allah and his angels and his books and his messengers. We make no difference between any of his messengers. And they say, we hear and obey our Lord. Thy forgiveness do we crave, and to thee is the, eventual, is the eventual course. Allah imposes not on any soul a duty beyond its scope. For it is that which it, it is that which it earns of good and against it that which it works of evil. Our Lord punishes us not if we forget or make a mistake. Our Lord, do not lay on us a burden as thou didst lay on those before us. Our Lord, impose not on us afflictions which we have not the strength to bear. And pardon us and grant us protection and have mercy on us. Thou art our patron, so grant us victory over the disbelieving people. I, Allah, am the best knower. Allah, there is no God but he, the ever-living, the self-subsisting, by whom all subsist. He has revealed to thee the book with truth, verifying that which is before it. And he revealed the Torah and the gospel. Um, aforetime, a guidance for the people, and he sent discrimination. He sent the discrimination. Those who disbelieve in the messages of Allah, for them is a severe chastisement, and Allah is mighty, the Lord of retribution. Surely nothing in the earth or in the heaven is hidden from Allah. He it is who shapes you in the wombs as he pleases. There is no God but he, the mighty, the wise. He, he it is who has revealed the book to thee. Some of its verses are, dis, are decisive and others, uh, sorry, some of its verses are decisive. They are the basis of the book and others are allegorical. Then those in whose hearts is perversity follow the part of it which is allegorical, seeking to mislead and seeking to give it their own interpretation. And none knows its interpretation save Allah and those firmly rooted in knowledge. They say, we believe in it. It is all from our Lord and none mind, ex none mind except men of understanding. Our Lord, make not our hearts to deviate after thou has guided us and grant us mercy from thee. Surely thou art the most liberal giver. Our Lord, surely thou art the gatherer of men on a day about which there is no doubt. Surely Allah will not fail in his promise. Those who disbelieve, neither their wealth nor their children will avail them aught against Allah, and they will be fuel for fire.
as was the case of the people of Pharaoh and those before them. They rejected our messages. They rejected our messages. So Allah destroyed them on account of their sins. And Allah is severe in requiting evil. Say to those who disbelieve, you shall be vanquished and driven together to hell. And evil is the resting place. Indeed, there was a sign for you in the two hosts, which met together in encounter, one party fighting in the way of Allah and the other disbelieving. Women, they saw twice as many as themselves. Oh, sorry. Whom they saw twice as many as themselves with the sight of the eye. And Allah strengthens with his aid whom he pleases. There is a lesson in this for those who have eyes. Fair seeming to men is made the love of desires of women and sons and hoarded treasures of gold and silver and well-bred horses and cattle and tilth. This is the provision of the life of this world. And Allah with him is the good goal of life. Say, shall I tell you of what is better than these? For those who guard against evil are gardens with their Lord, in which rivers flow and abide in them, and pure companions, and Allah's godly pleasure, and Allah is seer of the servants. Those who say, our Lord, we believe, so forgive our sins and save, gosh, um, sorry, forgive our sins and save us from the chastisements of the fire. The patient and the truthful and the obedient and those who spend and those who ask divine protection in the morning times. Allah bears witness that there is no God but he, and so do the angels and those possessed of knowledge, maintaining justice. There is no God but he, the mighty, the wise. Surely the true religion with Allah is Islam, and those who were given the book deferred only after knowledge had come to them out of envy among themselves. And whoever disbelieves in the messages of Allah, Allah indeed is quick at reckoning. But if they dispute with thee, say, I submit myself entirely to Allah, and so does he who follows me. And say to those who have been given the book and the unlearned people, do you submit yourself? If they submit, then indeed they following the, then indeed they are following the right way. And if they turn back, thy duty is only to deliver the message and Allah is seer of the servants. Thank you so much, Sister Ebony. Can you guys hear me? Yes, ma'am. Praise be to Allah. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, what do you guys um, would like to point out or what did you hear that you loved or appreciated? Um, is there anyone that would like to speak or that you learned today? Sister Naomi? Hi, alaikum. Um, I'm going to have to go back and read because there was a lot in it. And I can't say that there is one particular ayat because it was a lot. But to me, the overall arching theme um, was that we do not exceed the limits. Um, and what whatever is in our heart is regardless of if we do charity, um, all, all of these things to be seen, you know, out in public, it's, it, 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 it remains what's in our heart. And that is what a lie is going to judge us on. Um, and when it brought up King Saul, uh, brother Ishmael, I believe it was last month, he talked about King Saul and um, 
it reminds me of how when our heart is not right and we are not focused on the law and we are not submitting regardless of the way things look because sometimes in our minds you know some, sometimes for myself and I don't know if this is anybody else but sometimes in my mind I'm like okay I, I, I'm supposed to submit <laughs> but then this thing over here looks like maybe um maybe that might be better right uh because there's some kind of reward or there's something that's attached to it but then you have to go back to the law says submit. And I'm saying that because with King Saul, he was given something to do. And, you know, he went to war. He was told not to take any of like the booty or bounties. And he did it anyway. <laughs> and so in the end, a lot ended up, you know, taking his life because he did, he exceeded the limits. Um, there Sorry. is one. Um, Let's stop. We gotta get up. School time, baby. Um, something that my father. So, something my father shared with me when he was, when they were building a farm in Michigan. Um, and the minister used to speak to them all the time. My dad told us a story. Um, about asking a question about exceeding the limits, and he said the honorable Miss Louis Farrakhan told them that to the degree someone resists is to the degree that you apply pressure, but you do not exceed the limit because a lie does not like those who exceeds the limits. And <clears throat> I know for me, sometimes when people do me stuff and this is growth, <laughs> you know, you be wanting to hurt them. You, you be wanting them to feel what you feel. <laughs> you be sometimes in your heart, not that is what you want to do, but you just really, you're like, I want them to feel this, but not realizing that you are exceeding the limits. And so you won't be in Allah's grace. You will not be in his mercy. Allah cares about what is right, what is dutiful, and what he asked us to do. And I think this, the, the whole chapter, especially the part about um, as women, right? And as being someone who's been divorced before, and it says to let the woman go in kindness, like divorce and kindness, if if that's what you're going to do. Um, and as much as the minister teaches <clears throat> on the proper treatment and things of women, like the Holy Quran is the guide. It, it, it lines it out. But we exceed the limits all the time because of our emotions. So if we don't get our emotions in check, especially, you know, as, as a woman, we know what it feels like. Um, but from the other side, as men, they may not understand, like, what it is that we go through. But just, I, I don't know why I put it on me to even say what I'm going to say. it. Um, but when we're dealing in terms of divorce, anybody who's going through divorce, um, particularly women, when we are catching pure, like, madness, when we're trying to separate and it's not being done in kindness, just a... I guess a word of encouragement, like a lie sees it all. And so don't, don't get bitter. Don't allow your heart to harden. Don't even get upset because a lie is with those who submit and who do not exceed the limit. And anyone who does the opposite, a lie will deal with them accordingly. Um, so to me, this whole thing was don't exceed the limit. It's just that constant reminder of check my heart and don't exceed the limit. Even when I think that that's the right thing to do, he said, don't exceed the limit. That's really good. Thank you so much, Sister Naomi. Um, is there anyone else that would like to speak? Um, for me, the it's, I wanted to point out what Sister Naomi also said, the duty. I think this week I really realized how duty is, love is duty, but duty is superior because duty is doing what you need to do, whether you like it or not. Because sometimes, sometimes you love and you, and you, the duty that you have, if you lose that love, 
because you're upset or something like that. Um, it's, it's hard to do your duty. But when you focus on duty, no matter what, where the love is, like if it's high today or low, when duty is there, then it's really the best way to keep the peace in many, many instances. Uh, Sister Mariama? Yes, assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, I, yeah, that was, thank you for what's been shared so far. Um, this surah period, I'm having so much appreciation for because there is so much in it. Um, what the word that comes to my mind is business because contracts, um, the part about contracts and uh, marriage and divorce and these are a lot of things to think on really and you know as someone who's currently who's married you know it's a it's a constant journey and obligation and it's a um it's a duty to Allah and it makes me think about business that the business must be handled and I'm even the idea of divorce and the situation of that is something to be thought about as a married person um not the idea of divorce but the idea of the limits I would say um and not exceeding limits and keeping in the straight path and business to me is success because there's there's limits and boundaries to it it's not just doing what I want to do when I feel like doing it it's Allah has prescribed something here but there's so much mercy and room to move and um the part that's got me that I just was looking at was Sir to um, verse 286. Whew. Allah, I'm just going to read it real quick. Allah imposes not on any soul a duty beyond its scope, for it is that which it earns of good and against it that which it works of evil. Our Lord, punish us not if we forget or make a mistake. Our Lord, do not lay on us a burden as thou didst lay on those before us. Our Lord, impose not on us afflictions which we have not the strength to bear and pardon us and grant us protection and have mercy on us. Thou art our patron. So grant us victory over the disbelieving people. My goodness, that is armor for the day, every single day. And I just wanted to reiterate that because he's telling us what to say. He's telling us what to do. We don't have to do it for ourselves. Allah Akbar, that's it. Good, that's really good. Thank you, Sister Mariana. Yes, all praise be to Allah. Um, anyone else would like to speak? Uh, that verse was um, Surah 2, verse 280, 286. Okay, is there anyone else that would like to, to share their thoughts? I would love to hear from you. Sister Naomi, did you raise your hand? Yes, ma'am. Um, Sister Marion made me think of something. Um, oh my gosh, sis, you are so correct. <laughs> um, we have always been taught to get things in writing and to have contracts and to always have a third party when two people are agreeing upon something. And it really just brought to my mind as believers doing business. Now, marriage, I've heard it said that that's a business, but now I'm talking about business, business, right? Us doing us, because we're in that age right now of building businesses and entrepreneurs and doing for ourselves. And I am all. I constantly have on my mind 
that Allah sees everything that I do, even the things that I don't mention, right? And when we are doing business, we are handling and dealing with his people. The people who patronize us do not belong to us. As believers in the nation of Islam, we do not represent ourselves. And so there, the Quran is literally the guide and the way. And if we do it the way that it says to do it, then it'll be correct. Um, so when we're dealing with people and we're building businesses, and I'm going to go back to exceeding the limits. When we wrong a lot of people, whether they're in the fold or not, because now we are following up with we're chasing money, we're chasing attention, we're chasing being on top, we're chasing being seen, we're chasing all of the vain things, right? And we are not following his way as far as business is concerned. As believers, we act, we do way more harm when we run businesses incorrectly, when we handle the people that allow, um, how can I put this? It's, it's like a lot gives us access to them, but they do not belong to us. Business is, is ministry as well. It's not just taking the payments, setting up a website, setting up programs. It, we, if, we, if we do not, the Quran is a guide in a way, and it constantly reminds us it's a guide in a way. There's not one subject that it hasn't, this, this particular section that we read, has touched on so many different areas in life, but it's the guide and the way, and we shouldn't do anything outside of that because it, it kept reminding us that Allah is, you know, Allah sees what you do. <laughs> Allah will come back behind that and, and give you what your hands rot. I don't care about what you profess out your mouth. I don't care who you say you follow. I don't care if you say, you know, the minister said do for self, but then we do a rotten business. It's just, it's a, it's a constant reminder for myself. The people do not belong to us. They belong to Allah. And whatever bounty, bounties that Allah allow us to have through business by dealing with people, we have to be very, very careful and not exceed the limit. So thank you, Sister Maria, for bringing that up because that just, it just really was like business. <laughs> thank you. Praise be to Allah. Is there anyone else you would like to share? And your, sharing your thoughts will be awesome because we're all learning together. Um, I wanted to point out real quick um, what sis, Sister Naomi said when you said exceeded the limits, to exceed the limits. When I read it, it made me think of boundaries like boundaries with self, mentally first, and then with others. But like the boundaries we have our, with ourselves is like, like I would not do that because it's not right and you will not do it. Even if someone else exterior wouldn't want to make you do something that is not right, having that boundary, that foundation in our mind that I will not do this because it's wrong it's really, really um, important. That's uh, that's what I that what came to mind with that. But Sister Serenity, uh, peace, everybody. Um, so the re, um, the part in the reading today that really uh, has stuck with me um, was where it says the in the parable of those who spend their wealth to seek Allah's pleasure and for the strengthening of their souls is a parable of a garden on elevated ground upon which rain falls. So it brings forth its fruit twofold. But if heavy rain does not fall on it, light rain is sufficient. And Allah is the seer of what you do. Um, and the reason why it's been sticking with me is because it's saying that even if the effort is made, even if you're not able to do as much as you believe that you can um or just physically can because this is the of course 
for a lot of people. It's just a trying time. It's been a trying time for the last three years or so. So um, just putting forth the effort to make sure that you're doing what you think is right and just. And then also just um, doing what's right with your soul and what you feel that, uh, and just making that connection. If if that's all you can do, just making a connection with Allah um, is more than sufficient enough. And, he's, and he sees that. So I don't know. I'm going to take that away for sure today because um, I don't know. I've just been really, really struggling with um, certain things. And that just, yeah. That's all I had to say. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes, ma'am. I really appreciate that too. Um, uh, Brother Shafi, did I say your name correctly? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, the verse that um that kind of spoke to me was uh, I had 284. And um, it says, uh, and whether you manifest what is in your minds or hide it, Allah will call you to account according to it. And that just uh, makes me think about some people who like in their minds and in their heart is like sickness or they're having like evil uh, thoughts about certain things or certain people, even though they don't make it manifest or don't show it, Allah knows what's in your hearts. So we have to be careful um, about what we are secretly thinking and what we think nobody knows or, uh, yeah, what nobody knows, but Allah knows what's in our uh, hearts. And that makes me, uh, think of when Jesus said, whatever a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Uh, yeah. And I, and I am also thinking of uh, in the swan song, um, where the minister was saying, uh, he was saying, uh, what you are in private is who you are yeah beautiful thank you so much for sharing that um anyone else would like to share okay so does anyone else want, would like to share with us your thoughts? Okay, so we're gonna conclude at 7.15. Is there anyone that would like to pray today? I could pray. Yes, yes, it's been yourself. Okay, so. Uh, let's pray. Take a seat. Can we pray? Seek refuge from Allah, from you, curse Satan. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful. Master of this day of judgment in which we now live, the alone do we serve, and to the alone do we beseech for thine aid. O Allah, guide us on the straight path, the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed favors, not the path of those upon whom thy wrath has been brought down, nor of those who go astray. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. hello, Akbar. Hello, Akbar. Beautiful day. Try to walk even five minutes if you can in the morning. It's going to feel so good. Assalamu alaikum. Well, thank you so much. Well, like tomorrow. Tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Oh.